Today I want to talk good idea meets reality. It's vermicomposting. Is it practical? Does it make sense? Or is it just a good idea that actually stalls out in practice? Stay tuned to find out all about that and my experiences with it coming up in this video. When I first got into permaculture, I was living in a condo at the time, right up by the beach. I had no yard whatsoever. I only had two available balconies which I could grow stuff on. But I also had a big garage, a two-car garage at the bottom of the condo that I could try and use for stuff. So a lot of my early exploration into permaculture was how can I apply it with what I have. And one thing I really wanted to do was close my waste stream. What could I do with all the food scraps that I was producing in our condo at that time? How could I recycle them or compost them down? I really didn't even have a space for an outdoor composter, the trash bin style composter at the time. So I had to find a way that I could do it in the garage. That meant I wanted to minimize fly pressure. I didn't want it to smell. My solution to that was worms. So since 2008, I've been composting with worms and overall it's been a good experience, but it's experience that I have found limited as well because worm composting, I think has some inherent problems with it, especially doing it at a small scale, but it also has some advantages. Let's take a look at my current worm composting unit and we'll see what my thoughts are on it and how it's been over eight or nine years of doing this. This is gonna be a bit of opening the tomb here because this worm bin hasn't opened and I don't know how long. I think it's been a year. What I did previously is I had a nice solid bedding at the bottom of worms and coffee grounds and vegetable scraps. That filled this bin up about halfway. Then I took straight up chicken bedding out of my chicken coop over there and I filled this thing up to the top with chicken bedding and I think I covered it with cardboard on top just to help keep the moisture in and I haven't opened it in a long, long time since. So let's open it up and see what it looks like. I'm curious. Well, here's what we have opening this up. And I didn't just cover it with cardboard, I covered it with an old wife beater. Some plastic bags. A lot of this bedding hasn't broken down. I'm not surprised at that because it's wood and this is a worm bin. And looking at this worm bin and digging through it, I think a lot of the old original worm compost is at the back. All the bedding is at the front. And the bedding experiment, I would say, more or less is a fail from an execution standpoint, but from a learning standpoint, it's a win because I know don't put chicken bedding in here. It doesn't really do anything. Although I am seeing some black soldier fly larva bodies in here, so they came in and populated. But what I have left at the very back here is this core of worm compost, vermicompost. And this stuff is pretty well broken down. You can still see worms in it. And one of the issues I've always had with worm composting, and this is my negative of worm composting, and I'll zoom out and we'll talk about this in a minute, is how do you separate the worms from this? How do you get this into the garden? If we go back to that time when I was in Oceanside living in the condo doing a lot of worm composting, I took it pretty seriously at the time. I had at one time I think six of the smaller Rubbermaid totes going and then I moved it to this bigger tote which I actually had on a little trolley so I could move it around my garage. And I was liking it. I really liked being able to dump the scraps in here and do it in what was a pretty urban environment. Knowing I didn't have a lawn, I could contain my waste and close the loop. But the struggle I always had was the struggle I just alluded to. How do you take the finished worm compostings and separate out the worms? This is that little thing within vermicomposting that I see as a huge problem and the people who endorse vermicomposting don't always talk about it. There's no easy way to separate these out in this type of system. My solution to this is just to always take these chunks of vermicompost and add this directly to the garden. Now while that's great, it's only really helping one area because a lot of times I'm just digging a trench and I'm dumping the worms and the compost into the trench and the trench isn't obviously extending over the whole garden so I'm not getting that much. I always wanted to be able to separate these out into the nice little 
pearls you see when you buy vermicompost or when you see people selling it. The only way I've ever figured out how to do that is in like a trommel, a screen on a slope where you could run this through, that trommel rotates, the fines fall through, the bigger chunks like this go out one end. But to try and do that on a home scale, especially if you're in an apartment or a condo without a yard, it's ridiculous. It's not going to happen. So what I'd be curious about is if you have a worm bin like this, this style, a contained bin that you access from the top, how are you separating the worm compost from the worms so you can put the worm compost into your garden and at least keep most of the worms in here? I've never ever found a good way to do it. I've never heard of a good way to do it that's simple and effective that most people can do. And I've tried a lot of different things and it's just never worked for me. This experiment of putting chicken bedding into the worm bin, was it a success or was it a failure? Well, it was both. From a results standpoint, meaning wanting to get nice usable worm compost from that chicken bedding, it's a complete failure because I don't have that. I have something that resembles compost that I'm actually gonna use in my trash cans, which I'll show in another video. So that part of the experiment, that's a negative. But from a positive standpoint, I learned that if you put the chicken bedding in there, don't expect it to come out to black gold even after a full year in a worm bin it's just not going to work it's woody material it's not going to break down now i didn't expect the worms to eat it but i thought there would be enough composting action in there between the carbon in the bedding and the nitrogen in the manure to get the bedding to really compost down and then the worms would eat the compost that's how i thought it would work didn't play out that way so now thinking of my trash can method it's going to be interesting to see how these trash cans evolve over time because i'm gonna have a couple trash cans that are solid chicken bedding that's manure and wood shavings only what are they going to do over time we'll see but that's why i'm doing this stuff to find out to see it's all an experiment so while the benefits of vermicomposting can be great, after all, you can take food scraps and get them digested by a biological entity, which you can then take the byproduct of and use that in your garden. All good. You can do this in an apartment, a trailer, a very small space. But how do you separate the worms from the finished compost? That's the big question. In all my research, I think the best way that you can do it is you have a system that's a flow through system, meaning everything you put into the system, you put it on the top and you extract your finished materials off the bottom. A lot of commercial entities do this. Just search Worm Power here on YouTube and you'll see some great videos of their system. They're in Avon, New York and they take dairy manure and run it through worms and they use a bottom fed system or they use a top fed system that extracts the finished product from the bottom to get a really nice looking product. I've tried to construct bottom access systems or top fed systems is probably the better way to say it on a home scale and I've never had good luck with it. You'd have to weld up a pretty big box. You'd have to have a nice screen on the bottom and then you essentially have a sweeper that can come and scrape that bottom layer off. For most people, that's not practical. Now I've seen these different worm huts where worms migrate up. I've seen these worm towers, I think they're called, that are like these fabric sleeves where you can let a little bit out the bottom. I don't know, it's really small scale. I think it's more fun and experiment than reality. So the constraint here is, what do you do with worms? Is it a good way to do it? Is it more just a fun thing, a more of an educational thing than a practical thing? Overall, I think it is. Now, if you had a whole bunch of space, you go with the bin method, you dump a whole bunch of stuff in the bin, and then you start adding windrow style to the bin, working your way down the bin. Eventually, you go back to the beginning of the bin, you pull out all the old contents from that end, and then put those into the field. But sometimes, again, when you pull them out of that system, they're in chunks, they're blocky, they're not this fine little granules, the rice-like granules that you see if you buy them. This has been my struggle with vermicomposting. That's why I'm totally passive with it right now. I have that one container that I'll dump food scraps into for a few weeks each year, close it up, come back a year later, empty it out. That's as much as I do with it. I'd rather have the chickens do it. I'd rather just integrate that material into the garden beds themselves or use it in some other way. Because on a home scale, a homesteading scale, vermicomposting. I think it's great. I'm not bashing it, but I think there's a deficiency in the method where getting real results, getting scalable results, getting quantity 
results that actually matter are very hard, especially given the time, effort, and equipment in, it doesn't make sense on a small scale. So while it's my belief that there's clearly some deficiencies and inefficiencies that come with at-home vermicomposting, I don't want to discourage people to do it because I think there's a lot of benefit to do it. And to see that benefit, I think you need to zoom out past the singular result of getting those nice black gold castings. If that's your only goal, then I think you're going to be disappointed and you're going to struggle. But if you have other goals, if you start to zoom out past that one goal, then I think it's a win because you can start to recycle food waste, you can start to learn about composting, you can get excited about worms, that's probably gonna to lead to gardening. If there's young people involved, that's always a good thing. You can experiment with new methods, new tools, new technology, new devices, new ways to compost to adapt to some of the issues and inefficiencies that you see in a bucket type system. So I don't want to discourage people from doing this, but I also don't want to claim that this is some sort of panacea. It's a great way to eat all your garbage because yeah, they can eat it all, but you're not always going to get the most easy to use byproduct at the end of the day. This has been my experiment with vermicomposting. Tinkered around with it for about eight years. It's good but it could be improved. So what are the next steps here for me? Well, I'm gonna empty this bin out. That's gonna go into some of the trash cans that I'm static composting for probably a year now. And then I'll fill this thing up with coffee grounds and food scraps and let it sit for some amount of time into the future. I'll be sure to label the date this time and then check back in it in six or 12 months, probably on video and we'll see what it looks like. Overall, vermicomposting, it's something that's fun and it's relatively passive for the results that I get Given the amount of effort I put in, I can't complain too much because there's barely any work going into this and I do get a usable product at the end of the day, so it's all good. If you want to learn more about vermicomposting, there's a lot of great resources out there. Check them out. A lot of them are right here on YouTube and I'm not one of them in this case. Thanks for watching this one. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.